Hey everyone, my name is Wedge and welcome back to our Color Pie Philosophy series. In case you haven't seen this series before, we dive into the colors of magic, how they think, what they do, why they do what they do. It's a pretty good time. In this video, we're going to be talking about the Orzhov Syndicate. We'll explore white, black, the color pair itself, its motivations, strengths, weaknesses. Anything you want to know, we're going to cover it. Oh, and one last thing before we dive in. To thank you for being patient while I've been gone, we're running a giveaway for not one, but two boxes of Masters 25. Two winners each get a box, shipped anywhere in the world for free. All you have to do is be a subscriber to the channel and click the first link in the description to enter. You can also follow on Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch to get even more entries, totally free. And you can win a box of the latest Master set. Pretty much a win-win. Now, without further ado, let's jump into some Orzov nonsense. We're going to take this step by step and the only way to do that is from the ground up, so we'll begin with the individual colors that make up the Orzov. White, known as the color of good, the color of morality and purity. When you think of the good guys in magic, you often think of white. But white is a bit deeper than that. White's morality, its purity and goodness are all in service of a greater goal, community. White values the whole over the individual so much so that it'll do anything to save the group. It will bend its own rules in the name of protection. It will go to great lengths to secure its people as a whole. Survival is more important than prosperity. Security is more important than freedom. White understands that their world is dangerous, cruel, and harsh. So there's no room for flexibility when it comes to the absolute safety of its people, normally. If you want a dichotomy, two forces being entirely opposed, black and white come pretty dang close in the magic universe. Black doesn't care about the group ever. Black doesn't care about morality or purity or good. Black cares about itself and furthering its own ends. Black finds the easiest way to get the most out of life and then does that. Potential consequences be damned. What makes black so powerful is that it's already decided to shed the trappings of society and play by its own rules, which often leads to sacrificing others for itself. Black believes that it's up to the individual to make Make their own way and to do that correctly, you should be able to do whatever you want. Its ambition is endless, its amorality is absolute, and those two things together create suffering wherever they go. White and black, the most iconic opposed colors in magic. White cares about community, protecting the people, morality, society, all of it. Black couldn't care less about any of those things. We've spoken about enemy color pairs before, but this is a whole other level, and in a way, it's incredibly human, isn't it? Morality versus amorality. Protecting others versus furthering your own goals. There's a lot of back and forth here, each side motivated by something completely different. With that said, it may seem difficult to think that an entire guild could exist in between these two extremes. But that's the most interesting part of that humanity I was talking about before. The ability and need to compromise. White and black find themselves connected through one simple feeling, fear. Fear is what allows these two colors to exist so closely to each other. Fear creates compromise. Fear blurs your vision, it changes how you see everything, and in the multiverse, it's no different. White desires safety, security, protection, and community. The world is dangerous, and white needs to feel that society can protect it from threats. It's afraid of its enemies, even potential ones that don't exist yet. That's the fear white has to deal with. The fear black hopes with, the fear of not being able to attain power, the fear of failing to rise to omnipotence, the fear of being inadequate, weak, and defeated. This plagues the mind of black. Think about it. Those who are black have given up on social constructs in the pursuit of true power. Can you imagine what would happen if they weren't able to achieve that power? Remember, Black is amoral, but it isn't insane, at least most of the time. It can apply logic to situations, and that's our way into the color pair. That single instance of black realizing that it might not be able to attain great power by itself. The fear that it could fail or be defeated. That's the connection we need. And that fear, that's what the entire Orzhov guild is built on. Let's explore that more. We're going to look at this from Black's point of view for a second. Black is alone, afraid it's going to fail by itself. It's taken its ambition and added realism to the equation and realizes that it might need help to reach its goals. So what does it do? It finds like-minded individuals to help prop it up. Imagine a group of Black-aligned beings all realizing that they can't attain the power they want by themselves, but if they come together, they wield a lot more power and therefore have a greater potential for dominance in the world. So you get these characters together. 
They're trying to figure out what they can do to solidify and gain power, then you just dangle white right in front of them. The color is just asking to be subjugated. Under the guise of religion and community, black offers white protection, faith, togetherness, and a purpose for living. A limited number of black-aligned elites control the organization like a criminal syndicate, and religion is perfect for this. Faith can be a weapon. In this case, it's used to create a docile society, one that blindly believes in the power of the Orzhov and everything they have to offer. So what does black it out of this? A lot, actually. The entire organization is built on top of white's need to be part of something, to be part of a community. And the fear of not having that structure is what led them to the Orzov in the first place. To capitalize on this need, on this fear, the black-aligned elites tax the congregation. Basically, they charge protection money like the mafia would to a business. As long as the people pay, they're safe and a part of something bigger than themselves. And in this way, those at the top slowly gain power through wealth and influence. The more people who join the Orzov, the stronger the elite become. Orzov is all about hierarchy, so you can bet that all the money that comes in goes right to the top. They keep offering better and better protection, people keep joining, eventually you have a small nation. And in this way, the black aligned individuals we spoke about at the beginning of this video gain their power. They sate their ambition. They're in a place where they can impact a great many people. They have a lot of money, a lot of power. Seems like the dream, right? Yeah. Nope, this is black we're talking about. The Orzov is chaos. You're, uh, you're gonna enjoy this. The only thing more insane than an is it wizard calming down and breathing for 10 seconds is black caring about the well-being of others. Can't do that at all no matter what. Black is self-centered, it's selfish, and ruthless. How do you imagine the leaders of the Orzov interact with each other? Are they besties? Do they play video games together? Have tea parties? Watch bubble guppies on Nickelodeon? No, they're deathly afraid of each other, paranoid beyond reason. None of them wanted to come together, but they had to. This isn't their ideal life. They want to be at the top alone with all the power, and they can't pull that off, so they're forced to be at the top together, constantly reminded that they can't do it themselves while always wanting more. They resent each other for having some of the power they believe they deserve. I mean, sure, they live much better than the masses that they're taxing constantly, but everything they do is motivated by fear and paranoia. Endlessly worried they'll be stabbed in the back, literally. It can be argued that the worst punishment for black is to have to rely on black. It's almost torture. And this leads me to what I think is the most fascinating thing about this guild, no one wins. White is obviously taken advantage of severely. They're taxed into oblivion in exchange for being able to survive. They're offered nothing in the way of wealth or prosperity, and all who disagree with the Orza face their wrath. Now, while Black is doing all the subjugating, they hate themselves the entire time. They hate having to compromise. They hate being unable to attain power on their own. The Orzov is a guild built on top of fear from both white and black. The entire guild, the entire church, the entire organization only exists because of fear. Think about that. That's kind of crazy and in a way makes it pretty friggin' human. What makes the Orzov strong is its ability to gain incremental advantages. Whether it's through taxing its own flock or draining all resources around it, the Orzov are all about sucking the life out of everything, again, literally. Whether it's as on the nose as drawn as emissary and blind obedience, or a bit sneakier like Underworld Coinsmith and Tide Hollow Sculler, the Orzov believe in choking out its enemies. That's one of the reasons Resurrection works so well with this guild. Beyond the fact that both black and white commune with the spirits, being able to constantly bring back the dead creates a war of attrition that no one can ever withstand. Cards like Necromancer's Covenant, Immortal Servitude, and Profane Procession serve to remind us that fighting the Orzov often means fighting the same enemies twice or three times or more. Victory through suffocation, quite dastardly indeed. It's actually kind of funny. White and black are so polar opposite, but in one way they're very similar. They have the ability to annihilate anything. While the Orzov would prefer to extend their reach over time with patience, slowly and methodically, sometimes they can't do that. They simply need to destroy something. Good thing both white and black have turned that into an art. Merciless eviction, utter end, vindicate, mortify, straightforward, devastating. Wrath of God and damnation both exist. You gotta imagine they come together for some nonsense. Now, who would the Orzov use this magic against. Their primary goal is to convert more to their cause, bring more into their flock. Why would they need pure destruction? One word, 
Gruul. The Orzhov hate the Gruul, and with good reason. Gruul can't be swayed to become part of the Orzhov. They won't pay taxes, and they won't be frightened into submission. We're talking about Gruul here. The Orzhov would approach them, ask for taxes, then immediately and ruthlessly be clubbed in the face. The Orzhov knows this, so instead of trying to talk to the crazies, they just destroy them, immediately, without mercy. There can be no friendship here. Gruul and Orzhov couldn't be worse enemies. It's just a crapshoot. Not even an episode of Dr. Phil could save these two. Orzov has a single weakness when translated to card design. It's slow. It wins through incremental advantage. It does not do that quickly. It's patient calculating, aiming to take everything from you before it finally gives you the sweet release of death. And while that can be terrifying, it falls to much faster strategies. It can't deal with an aggressive onslaught as well as it might want to. White-Black takes a lot of power, mana, and time to function properly. Against something low to the ground and aggressive, it's vulnerable. But if you give it enough time, it becomes nearly untouchable. That's how you beat Orzov, fast and dirty without thinking for a single second. No wonder they hate the Gruul so much. The Orzhov Syndicate is a guild built on compromise due to fear. White is a pawn for black, and black is paranoid of itself. Truly a ridiculous combination of colors, but one that is dangerous and powerful. Now, I do hope you enjoyed this episode in our Color Pie Philosophy series, and remember to click the first link in the description for a chance to win one of two free boxes of Masters 25, shipped anywhere in the world for free. You just have to be subbed to the channel. Now, let me know what you think about the Orzhov in the comments, and be sure to check out our other Color Pie Philosophy videos playlist Link will be in the description as well. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. I don't know if you know this, but you could already pre-order boxes at Dominaria right now on TCG Player for $90 each. If you don't have a local game store or yours charges way too much, just click the link on the screen and pre-order that Dominaria goodness. Helps the channel and you get to pre-order what is going to be a baller set. Helps us all out. Enjoy.